everyone and welcome to the video. In this video, I wanted to try making a logo entirely out of Canva. So a while back, as you may or may not know, I have made a logo tutorial before using Clip Studio Paint, but you know, not everyone has Clip Studio Paint or is familiar with art programs. And uh, randomly, I think I came up with the idea that it might be possible to make a logo entirely out of Canva. I think I managed to do somewhat decently. Uh, my logo kind of needed an update anyway. I haven't been using the old one at all since I kept rebranding. <laughs> I used a bit of uh, my Canva Pro features, so it might not be an entirely free kind of process. And in addition to making the logo on Canva, since I used Canva, I was able to also animate a sort of logo animation for starting their video. Saves me a lot of time since I haven't really had the time to learn After Effects. So yeah, in this video, I'll be discussing how I made a logo in Tarla of Canva. But before we get started, this video was sponsored by Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. Tokyo Treat and Sakurako have sent me their delicious November snack boxes to try out. Each box comes with an assortment of snacks and goodies straight from Japan. The theme for Tokyo Treats November box is Mount Fuji Snack Adventure. I was a really big fan of all the gummy treats that came with it. All the other snacks were also really tasty, and I always loved the big Kit Kat bag that comes with the boxes. Meanwhile, this month Sakurako has snacks and goodies from Saitama, Japan. Sakurako works with many Japanese family-owned businesses who dedicate their lives to the art of snack making. I was a big fan of all the pastries that came with it, and the gummies and a daifuku were probably my favorite part. This month's box also comes with a pair of beautiful chopsticks. All of the snacks had really balanced flavors and really matched well with tea. You can use code KAIREIRU to get $5 off your first Tokyo Treat or Sakurako box. Now let's get back to the Canva logo tutorial. As always, when I'm making a logo, I start with the font. This is a very simple step, you just have to pick the font that you like. But uh, I personally take the longest with this part, I think. I just, there's too many options with the fonts. And I'm like, but what if this one looks better, and then this one looks better, and I just um, end up having to pick between a lot of um, different fonts that sort of fit the vibe. So what I recommend doing is making multiple copies of the text and having all of the different fonts that kind of call out to you uh, next to each other. And like seeing them all together will make you um, be able to pick which one you like more than the other and slowly like narrow down your options. So once you've selected the font that you like, that's when you start um, experimenting with different assets. You can use the lines and uh, different vector assets that are on Canva. Like these lines, they're very adjustable. You can sort of make them into a frame using the line weight and just like the different sliders. There's like ways you can sort of make this work for you. I didn't end up using this in the end. Uh, but if this is the style that you're going for, this could be a technique that you could use. Uh, here I was just sort of experimenting with the different elements that I can use. So here I was just trying to see if I can have gradient on my other assets. The vector shapes do have the ability to have a uh, different sort of gradient. This is one way I was thinking of utilizing the gradient. You can sort of just experiment with different shapes that are available on Canva. So in my last um, logo tutorial video, people were asking me how I made like little decals. And I was like, oh, um, I don't know how to explain that because, uh, you know, I don't think the ones that I use will be specifically for you. So if you're someone who isn't like very uh, confident in their drawing, you can make use of the free assets that are on Canva. There are assets in Canva that are only available for pro. But I think there's really a lot more that are available just for free. And here I just pulled out some gradients and I sort of resized them so that they're only like uh, touching the bottom, like lower bottom half of the font. So my idea for how to get this gradient effect on the font is to save this entire thing as an image and then use the background eraser to remove the parts that are outside the font. Yeah, so I'm actually erasing it manually since a lot of it didn't get caught by the erase tool itself. The gradient font can also just be added in post uh, if you're aware of how to use like the editing software. 
But yeah, I really tried my best to make this tutorial entirely done in Canva. If you're using an asset that isn't a vector, where usually you can recolor a lot of like clip art from Canva. Uh, here in like this upper corner, there's like the square. And that's usually the area where it pops out if you are able to recolor that asset. Uh, some assets are just like PNGs or like raster format. So in those cases, you would have to adjust the colors to what is more suitable. Uh, you have like these sliders that you can move around. But in the case of the raster image, sometimes it's a little difficult to get the right colors that you do need. You're just gonna have to eyeball it to the color that you like, which, you know, might not be as easy for everyone. I also don't really like hue shifting that much. Maybe just a little bit of an adjustment is okay with me, but I'd prefer if the asset was already quite close to the color that I needed it to be. So my favorite decals and sort of assets used for decoration on my logos are these simple shapes that are usually just like a flat color. And luckily most of these clip arts are actually vectors and very easy to recolor to fit your palette. Uh, they're like very classy, very simple. Uh, in the case of my logo, I sort of sprinkled these uh, very simple vector shapes all over. Uh, particularly the sparkles on the font itself. And then I used the like the leaf kind of laurel looking thing on the corner. And then the little flowers in the sort of palette that I have. So in the case for these vector images, once you add sort of the raster effects onto the image, uh, in this case, I wanted to have a sort of white outline around the skull. So I was looking around for an effect for that. To actually turn your vector image into a raster image, you have to sort of um, put a one of these filters on it. So these photo filters will turn it into a raster image that you can then have the outline be put on. Uh, I tried to um, keep it as similar to the original vector uh, without changing the colors much because like a lot of these others pixelated the image for some reason and then added the strange glow to it. So I tried to keep it flat and as similar to the original uh, look of the skull. And once the image is already turned into a raster image, you can easily add an outline effect. The skull does turn into a raster image, which means you can't recolor it anymore. Uh, but that should be fine. Like, I already picked a color for it. So once everything is sort of uh, fine, you can sort of fine tune it and, um, like, you know, zoom in, zoom out and stuff. And in my case, I didn't end up using the butterfly. I do still like it, but it, it does feel like, like a little over overdone. After everything is done, I add a little tagline at the bottom of the logo itself. It just says, Changeling VTuber. Uh, you know, just to make it a VTuber logo, I guess. Uh, I just use a more simple font for it. And then I have uh, this little box around it. It's easy to sort of uh, pick out a box shape and sort of adjust the rounding of the corners with the settings on top. And yeah, with that, my logo is done. As an alternative, you can also export the logo with a transparent background and then drag it back in as a PNG. And then you can add the outline effect to sort of have this more polished look. I think it looks really nice and sort of just ties everything together. And afterwards, animating is really simple. You just gotta click this animate button on top and you should have like this sidebar that opens up. Since I wanted the logo to sort of pop out from different backgrounds, I wanted to have a sort of outline around it. So I exported the logo as a transparent logo and then put it back into the file as is. And I put the outline image effect and had it adjusted to the right amount of uh, outline that I wanted and changed it to white. The outline of it and not to have like a duplicate of the text. So I basically just use the image sliders to sort of adjust the font so it's basically white. And you know, I just made all of these adjustments. You can see what I did with the sliders. Like that, I just adjusted everything, put it in the back. And now I can animate it. Uh, the thing with my uh, setup for my elements, it doesn't really work out if I use a lot of the other animation effects. I think pop might be the best. 
uh, since it doesn't look very strange. I actually didn't know that um, Canva had this, but the motion effect uh, sort of allows you to have like this looping sort of movement on your this sort of looping movement on your elements. So I just had it have the flowers rotating since the flowers are very circular, rotation should be quite easy. And then I had the glitter parts and like the shiny parts to have a pulse effect so that it looks like it's sparkling. Oh, by the way, uh, also if you're doing the effect, I recommend having it to having it set to on enter so that the animation is only for the entering. Uh, be different for like if it if it came in and then like the element exited. Uh, usually you can only have one of these at a time so what I do is I usually have it on enter and then I'd have another slide where I would have the on exit animation. The pop effect really wasn't the ideal for the exit so what I had for the second slide was I had everything merged. I grouped uh, all of the elements together and then I just had them all as one exit animation just exiting all at once. So that was actually a lot more smoother. So the three slides that I have for this um, logo animation is just first the entry, like the animation for entering and the animation for exiting, and then a final slide that's just like the plain green so that it fades out properly. With that, I have a simple animation, but yeah, that's it. And this is the result. This is the animation that we've made. Uh, for my logo and I'm very happy with how it turned out like I all the elements that I used for this were directly done on Canva I did not uh, put my own assets onto it and everything was just like me trying to use the program for what it might not have been um, made for but you know if it works it works yeah I hope you can try out the the Canva logo making on your own as well and I hope it works out and tell me how it goes in the comments down below. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. This video, I was supposed to work on another video for Halloween, but I didn't really make it in time. I just kind of uh, wasn't feeling the best. So I was like, okay, I, I can't make this uh, video anymore. So I'm just gonna upload the, the other video another time and sort of lean it more towards a general topic. Thank you so much to Tokyo Street and Sakuraka once again for sponsoring the video. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, comment, and subscribe if this video was helpful to you in some way. Yeah, thank you for watching. Bye bye.